Exodus 22 and verse 16. And if a man entices a man. A man entices a woman. Meaning, he talks to her, he's nice. You know, he well, he look, he look good looking, he smell good. She's like, oh, I want to be with this man. I might want to have a relationship with this man. Come on. That is not betrothed Free. and lie with her. But then they have, they be in a relationship for a while and they find themselves having sex. That's what grown folks do, right? Go ahead. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. What the Bible say he's supposed to do? If he has sex with you, he's supposed to make you his wife. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? If he lays with you, he's supposed to make you his wife. Go ahead, sis. Every man, every man that uh, I mean, every um woman that a man lays with, that must be his wife. The first woman he lays with supposed oh, to be his wife, woman. according to the scriptures. But guess what? This shit church, church started from the bottom, but the last shall be first. First, true to Benji Levi said the last shall be first. You know it, you know remember Nasty said the last shall be first. You know it, you know it. Send me on and zip it long, gas shall be first. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Hey, you know how you were baffled when you saw the housing discrepancy? You was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's going to be affordable housing, retirement housing, but it ain't for black people. You remember? You know how you were saying that? You know why? Because America is a mirage. You know what a mirage is? You ever been in the desert and you've been deprived of water? And you start to see visions of water and lakes and oceans, but you're in the middle of the desert in Arizona. I'm in the desert right now. That's, thank you. I'm in the desert that's right what, now. That's what America is. That's right. I'm in the desert it's meant right to now. give you the illusion of inclusion. That's right. Here in America, a lot of our people think we're free. But look, we catch the bus. We in the ghettos. We impoverished. We ain't got good food to eat. All the food they sell us is old, watered down, Bring it out. nasty. You understand? GMO food where they inject the food to make it bigger. Right. Genetically modified organisms. You think you're free going to get you a McDonald's or getting you a Wendy's four for four, no but food. that ain't even meat that you no, eat. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? It's, it's artificial. Yeah. So there's an illusion of inclusion here. The black man will make a little money, wear his nice clothes, get him a nice house, drive him a nice car, and forget he got brothers and sisters in the ghettos that's being destroyed every single day of his life. That's right. Because you have the illusion that things are okay, but it's not. Watch this, Lamentation 4.17. Let me say what the Bible said about that. We can never get caught up thinking that this place is for us. I'll give you an example. If I start a business, and the way that I get the money for the business is by robbing poor people, can I ever establish anything good from no, that business? No, sir. Because the foundation of that business is corrupt. Am I not right? Am I right about that? So now America rape, robbed, murdered your brothers and your sisters, stole the land from the Native American uh, Indians, okay. and they're going to tell you, I'm going to build a church on top of that land yeah. and teach you about God. Uh, Does that make any sense? How am I going to teach you about God on land that I stole? Right. Yeah. And the Bible says, thou shalt not steal. Right. Right. That don't make no sense. Right. Watch this. Read. The Book of Lamentations. Chapter 4 and verse 17. Uh -huh. As for us, our eyes as yet fail, for our vain hope. Our eyes as yet fail. When the Bible says your eyes fail, meaning you're disappointed. Right. You're discouraged. The Bible says our eyes have yet failed for our vain help. Read. In our watching, in our watching, in our waiting, go ahead. We have watched for a nation that cannot save us. Like you got the presidential election that's going to be at the end of this year, right? In November, right? Black people going to really go down and vote right. like they vote matter. Right. There's right. something called the Electoral College. They choose your president. Right. Right. You can go and vote in droves. Hillary Clinton had more votes. Al Gore back in the day had more votes. That's right. They said, hell no, we want George Bush in there. Right. Hell no, we want Donald Trump in there. Right. We don't care because you got a million more votes. We're going to let the Electoral College choose right. our president. Right. So the black man, the black woman, run down to the voting polls thinking that it actually is a benefit and your vote means nothing. That's right. Right. You understand what I'm saying? That's why the Bible say in our watching, we are watched for a nation that cannot save us. America can't save us from the condition that they put us in. Right. It don't make no sense for us to go to the so-called white man and say, look, save us, help us, give us reparations, give us money. Right. It wasn't meant for him to do that. Right. 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 You understand what I'm saying? Baruch 4 and 6, yeah. it was not meant for him to save us. Right. You know how we're going to be saved? 
by turning back to God. That's right. right. Stop raping our women. Stop putting children in a woman and not staying with her and setting up an actually good family structure. Right. That's, That's right. what the black community need. Right. Stop selling drugs to your brothers. That's right. You understand? Our sisters got to stop sleeping with these men that you already know they ain't no good. He didn't have a job when you met him. Right. Right. He didn't have a job when you had sex with him. Right. He didn't have a job when you had a baby by him. Bring right. it up. You got to stop. That's right. We got to right. stop. Watch right. this. Read. Hold on for you. Hold on. Let me click. Let me click. Baruch 4 verse 6. Start at 5. Watch verse this. Be of good cheer, my people. So God said, I know you're going through some stuff, right. but be of good cheer, my people. Watch this. The memorial of Israel. Go ahead. Ye were sold to the nations, not for your destruction. We were sold to the nations. And guess what? This ain't a white black thing. Because a lot of people here are speaking, they say, oh, you guys are racist. No, we're just telling you what you did to us. That's That's right. If you were smacking me upside my head, and I say, hey, ouch, that hurts, stop smacking me. You say, oh my God, how dare you tell me to stop hitting you? You're a racist. Does that make sense? Does that make any sense? You stealing from my children, taking food out of their mouth. And I say, hey, that's not yours. That's my child food. And then you say, you're a racist for telling me not to steal from your children. You up. just shut up and let me do it, you racist. That don't make no sense. Right. But that's how they got us feeling, right? Reverse right. racism is what they call it. Oh, you guys are reverse racism. No, we're just teaching the truth. Right. Now, the so-called white man is not the only nationality that had us enslaved. There's something called a sub-Saharan slave trade where the Arabs right. had us enslaved. Right. That's right. There's something called the Indian Ocean slave trade where people from East India, Sri Lanka, you understand India, uh, Indonesia, various different places had us enslaved. Bring it up. So this is not a black-white thing, like we just against the so-called white man. Or we just, you understand what I'm saying? All nations had a hand in our enslavement. So now we read this scripture, come on. You were sold to the nations, not for your destruction. God said he sold us to the nations, but it wasn't to destroy us. Right. Go ahead. But because you moved God to wrath. God sold us in slavery because we moved him to wrath. That's right. Like right now, I'll give you an example. Black people out here talking about they Muslims. They study Islam, right? Did you know that right now in Mauritania, in all these very distant places throughout Africa, they are selling our people as slaves? Teach up! Did you know that Arabs, Muslims, are selling us as slaves right now in Africa? They taking our women from Nigeria, Burkina Faso, all these various different places, and taking yes, and taking them to Yemen, Arabia, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iran, and slaves. Did you not know that? But see, but the black man in America say, "I'm a Muslim, though." I feel I'm a Laker, my brother. You understand what I'm saying? We were just. Thank you. Hey, you ain't supposed to eat pork, but guess what? That was given to us. That commandment was given to us. God told us not to eat pork. That's right. God told us not to eat shrimp. Right. God told us not to eat lobster. God told us not to eat crab. Yeah. Right. We do that because we don't know no better. Right. So the Bible said God didn't send us here to destroy us. He sent us here because we pissed him off. Right. Yeah. Now your question should be, well, if I'm in this condition because I made God angry, what do I need to do to turn back to God? That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you know how to please God? Did anybody know how to please God? Teacher. Yeah, please God, follow his rules and commandments. Follow his rules and commandments. The sister owned to something. In order to please God, you have to do what God says. Stop listening to the Christian church. Oh, you can't do nothing to get to the kingdom of heaven. That's stupid. Right. If I want to go to the NBA, what I got to do? Work Teacher. hard. If I want to get an education, what I got to do? Work hard. Yeah. If I want to learn about how to build cars, what I got to do? Work hard. That's so the Bible telling you right here. Right? Come on, read that for me with your head again. You were sold to the nations, not for your destruction. So God didn't send us here because he wanted to destroy us, free. But because you moved God to wrath. But we made God angry. Now we need to learn what we need to do to get back on God's good side. Watch this. 1 John 3.23. You want your prayers heard, right? You want your prayers heard? Okay. Go ahead. The book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 23. Yeah. I don't want to come out here and make noise and try to stop God's word. That's right. the devil right there. Right. Right. That's we right. ain't bothering nothing he got going. Ain't nobody come out here. I've been coming out here for months. Ain't nobody ever sat outside not one time. Right. Even in the spring. Right. Come on, man. Right. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ. Started, uh, we at 22, 1 John 3, 22. Verse 22. Watch this. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Y'all hear that, sis? You hear that, sis? My sister right here. You hear that? I want you to hear this real quick. Watch this. Bring it out. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. God says, whatever we ask, we receive of him. But why? Because we keep his commandments. Oh, right. And right. do those things.
things that are pleasing in his sight. When we keep God's commandments, we do things that are pleasing in his sight. That's right. But in America, there's a place called Sin City right. where you can go cheat on your wife. Right. You can go to a brothel. Right. You can go have a prostitute have a right. prostitute and it's free. It's That's legal. You can do drugs. All that's thank you. Yes. It's meant to corrupt our spirit. Right. Remember. This place was built on sin. That's right. Bring it up. America was built on sin. That's yeah. right. It was built on the transportation of one race of people from one part of the world to the other part of the world, and then those people were made slaves. Right. It was built on things like the Indian Removal Act of 1830. Right. They basically made all Native Americans vacate from their land and move to Oklahoma and various right. places throughout the Midwest. Right. So how are you now going to establish a government system on a place that robs people? Right. You can't. You understand what I'm saying? When the Constitution was written, you were not in a position of being free. It was not written for you. Right. You were considered three fifths of a man. Right. right. Guess what the Constitution still said? Was that ever changed? Nope. Wait a minute. So in the Constitution, you are still three fifths of a man. You're not even a whole man. Ain't no black person outraged. We doing all this voting, all this going down to the voting polls, trying to get new presidents in, but ain't nobody say, hey. When y'all gonna change the constitution and say that I'm actually a person? Bring it out. I'm actually a whole being, a whole man. Bring it out. Everybody around here shaking their head, they mad because I'm saying this. I don't give a damn. No. All right. The word of God said, expose evil. Give me that in uh, Jeremiah 28, verse 8. Yeah. So since we gotta keep the commandments, brother, right here, make sure you keep the commandments, my brother. Like when you listen to the word of God and when you pray it, keep your head uncovered. Take your hat off like you did earlier. All right, watch this. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 28 and verse 8. Come on. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries. So a lot of y'all, when y'all hear us speak, or a lot of people when they hear us speak, they say, man, them dudes is bold. Them dudes is arrogant. Them dudes is loud. Who are these people? And why do they teach like that? Do you think Jesus Christ taught soft? Did they have speakers back when Jesus Christ taught? Did they have microphones or bull horns when Jesus Christ talked? So how did he teach 5,000 people at one time? What do you think he did with his voice? Right. It was, uh, it was knowledge and wisdom and speak through the truth of the light. But I'm saying, in order for me to teach, if 5,000 people lined up in front of me and I didn't have a speaker, what would I have to do for the person in the back to hear me? He got to speak loud. I got to speak loud. Yeah. So if Jesus Christ was teaching 5,000 people at one time without an amplifier, without a speaker or a microphone, he had to teach loud. Yes, right. So then they come out here with us. They say, oh, y'all need to turn your speaker down. Y'all too loud. We got ordinances. Oh, but there's prostitution going on in the same street. Right. There's drug dealing right. going on in the same street. Right. But they want us to turn our speaker down. Right. Right. That's the evil of the society that I'm talking about. Read yeah. it. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries. So some of you may say, why would you speak about America in that way? Why would you speak about Afghanistan? Or why would you speak about the UK? Or why would you speak about Germany or Russia or France in that manner? The Bible tells you, you're supposed to prophesy against countries. That's right. Why? why? You, what are you supposed to prophesy about in those countries? Go ahead. And against great kingdoms of war. So we're supposed to prophesy about the wars that's going on. Read. Right. And of evil. And the evil that's going on, like redlining. When I ride through the city of Raleigh, there you have a mixture. On one street, on one, on one house, the house is worth 40, 50 grand. It's torn down. The very next house is worth $800,000. Bring it up. Bring it up. That's called gentrification. Right. Go and buy the houses for cheap. Put drugs in the community. Put guns in the community. Put des destructive music in the community. I want to ask you a question. Could not pornography be banned in America? Yes, because a lot of kids are watching porn. Yeah. Could not drill music where young black men talk about killing other black men? Couldn't that be shut down? Couldn't Bring they stop up? that? Right. They could. They could. Have they could shut it down. Out of yes, they could shut it down. They said, "Look, we're not signing no more artists that's going to make music about killing other people or selling dope." That's right. But they won't do it. Right. And why won't they do it? Right. Because right. it destroys our young men and our young uh, women. Yeah. Right. Most, of, most of these young brothers that's sitting out here right now, the music in their playlist is all about murder, drug dealing, gang banging, kill that nigga, shoot that nigga, that's rape right. that hoe, search right. work that ass. Right. That's all the music is about. Right. Then you wonder why they want to go and live that lifestyle. Right. 
But that ain't on the country music station. Right. When I turn on the country music station, all right. I hear is about love, right. family, right. raising up our children. Right. My, my, my father that taught me great things when I was a kid that died and passed on, right. how I miss my father. Right. Right. But when you turn on our music, it's all about kill that, smoke that, shake that. Right. Why do you think that is? Bring it out, girl. That's a form of, of, of fornication and idol worship. Absolutely. It's a form of fornication, idol worship, and oppression. Right. 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 Where you at? Read it. The prophets that have been before me and before the of old prophesied both against many countries. So when you see people, they look at black people and they say, oh, look at those niggas. Look how they act. But in the early 1900s, in the late 1800s, we were the most industrious people on the earth. Uh, in the late 1800s, when we were released from slavery, so-called, we became industrious. We created things like Mount Bayou, Mississippi. Right. We created things like Durham, North Carolina. Right. We created Black Wall Street. Right. We had created all kinds of things. And what did they do? In the red summer of 1919, they burned them all down. Right. So you can't say we lazy now, when at one time we was working our tail off for free for you, right. got released from slavery, became equal to you financially, and you burned it down because you hated to see us on top. Right. Right. You were afraid of our intellect. You were afraid of us surpassing you. Right. right. So now in 2024, they put all these things in place throughout the 1960s, throughout uh, integration, all these very different things to destroy us. So now they can point the finger and say, look at these niggas. Right. That's right. Look at how they act. Look at their women. That's all by design. Right. But God gave us the keys to get out of that, y'all. God gave us the Bible. Right. And the understanding of his word to release us and release our mind. Right. Watch this. Give me the truth. Yes, sir. Bring it up. The truth shall set you free. John 8. Watch yes, this. Sir. Jesus Christ told us something. Bring it out. And I want you to pay attention because you're going to go to church and they're going to play the, 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 the tambourine and the organ and you're going to fall right back to sleep. No, you need to wake up, repent, and keep the commandments of God. That's we right. out here to uplift you and teach you the truth. That's Come right. On. The book of John, chapter 8 and verse 32. Come on. Bring it out. And you shall know the truth. This is Jesus speaking. When it's in red, that means what? It means stop. That means Jesus' word. word. When it's written in red, that means Jesus' word says. So when it's written in red in the Bible, that means Jesus speaking. Let's see what he said. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now the truth gonna set you free. Shall make you free. The Bible said the truth gonna make you free. This is why they cover up the truth. That's this right. is why they don't want to tell you so-called Blacks, Hispanic, and Native American Indians of Raleigh, North Carolina, that you are the Jews according to the Bible. That's right. That's right. That you are God's chosen people. Right. And the reason you suffer, the conditions that you suffer, is because you don't know who you are. Right. And you sin against your God. Right. So now God is calling us to tell you, repent, That's keep right. the commandments. What's the truth? Yes, sir. What is the truth? Give me yeah. Romans 2.18. Yes, sir. What is the truth? It's going to tell you. Romans chapter 2, verse 18. The book of Romans, chapter 2, and verse 18. Yeah. And know his will, and approves the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. Watch this, verse 20. Verse 20. An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, Read. which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. The truth is in the law. The truth of God's word is in the law. I give you an example. 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 Watch this. Give me the book of Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 7. I'm going to show you something. The truth of God is in God's laws. Right? Watch this. Deuteronomy 22. I'm going to show you something. Deuteronomy chapter 22. I want you to read verse 25. Bring it out. The book of Watch Deuteronomy it. 22 and verse 25. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her and lie with her. So this is talking about rape. The Bible does talk about rape and how that is wrong. We, nobody read this to us. Everybody tell us God's law is done away with. Then you got, if you pull up your phone right now, you can pull up certain apps that will pull up all of the sex offenders in your local area. Right. You're going to notice you got thousands of sex offenders that are registered that live right around the corner from you. Right, right. But the Bible says right here that if a man grab a woman, Forces her, read, and lie with her, and has sex with her, but he forced her to do it, right? Come on. Then the man only that lay with her shall die. What did the Bible say he's supposed to do? What's supposed to happen to that man? He's supposed to be punishment. He's, what did the Bible say? The Bible said a three letter word. He's supposed to what? Punishment. Die. 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 Yeah. He's supposed to die. Right. Now, why? Keep reading. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. Read. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. Because she didn't do nothing wrong. Go ahead. 
For as when a man rises against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. So there are a lot of brothers and sisters that live, and my sister, follow in with us real quick. I want you to hear this, because I know you can, you probably have experienced or seen some of these things that we're talking about, right? So we're talking about in the black community, how uncles, big cousins, grandfathers, sometimes even fathers, touch little boys and little girls in our community. And it happens so frequent that mama said, I can't say nothing because that's my husband. I don't want him to leave. I don't want him to go to jail. They are the boyfriend. I really like this one. I finally got one that I really like. So yeah, he may have touched you, but it was only one time. Right. You understand how evil that is? And you understand what that does to a child? Right. So now we read right here, God says, if a man rapes a woman, touches her inappropriately, forces her to have sex with him, it's the same as killing her. That's uh -huh. right. This is why many young girls, when they're raped at a young age, they grow up and they be prostitutes. Right. They yeah. be strippers. They do porn. Right. And we be like, why is she doing that? She wasn't raised like that. You don't know what she went through. She got broke psychologically. Right. That's right. You understand? Her innocency as a baby, as a child, was taken from her. Right. So now the Bible says, what, Reed? But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. Read. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. Read. For as when a man rises against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. So the Bible telling us the repercussions of rape. Re repercussions of forcing someone to lay with you. And it happened to young boys in our community too. Right. But yeah. God said, Christ said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now that you know these things have happened in our community, now you start to teach against it. Now you start to bring this to the forefront and say, listen, we got to stop this in our community. We got to we got to stop doing what we're doing in our community. God said that's how you find out. It's in his commandments. That's right. When you go look at these commandments that's in the Bible, you start realizing, you know what? I ain't been living right. I have been doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'll give you an example. You marry sis? I'm in a full committed relationship. Okay. You marry my sister? Yeah. One day, Lord's will, baby. Yeah, one Lord's day. will, right? So watch this real quick. Exodus 26, 22, 16 before you leave. Yes, sir. Yeah. Exodus 22, 16. Because remember, God said the truth is in his commandments, and that's going to make us free. Watch this. The book of Exodus 22 and verse 16. Yeah. And if a man entices a man. A man entices a woman. Meaning, he talks to her, he's nice. You know, he well, he look, he look good looking, he smell good. She's like, oh, I want to be with this man. I might want to have a relationship with this man. Come on. That is not betrothed Free. and lie with her. But then they have they be in a relationship for a while and they find themselves having sex. That's what grown folks do, right? Go ahead. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. What the Bible say he's supposed to do? Say with one wife, one woman that he's supposed to be. If he has sex with you, he's supposed to make you his wife. Yeah. Right. You understand what I'm saying? If he lays with you, he's supposed to make you his wife. Go ahead, sis. Every man, every man that I, I mean, every um woman that a man lays with, that supposed to be his wife? The first woman he lays with supposed oh, to be his wife, one. according to the scriptures. Oh. But guess what? You and I, because I, I've had sex with multiple women before in my lifetime, that I was supposed to make the first one I lay with my wife, and oh. I did. Well, I did. <laughs> but in between that, you understand, I was doing evil. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, That's God true. is telling us we're not supposed to move like that. This is why the Bible said the truth shall make you free. Right. So now, you done, you you older now. You're in your 30s, 40s, whatever. You done had sex with somebody. And you're like, well, what does that mean now? Am I still held accountable for that now? Only if you don't repent. Right. If you repent, the things you've done in the past are erased. Yeah. Right. You can't hold against me what I did 20 years ago if I now turn to God. Yeah. It's erased yeah. off my plate. But moving forward, should you have sex with a man that's not your husband? No. no. You should wait. You should make him wait. Make him marry you. Make him do the right thing. Make him show you that he can provide for you. Make him show you that he gonna be there for you and your children. Make right. him show you that he can protect you. Right. Then, and only then, and then you find out he's a man of God, then you take the next step of marrying him. Right. right. You understand? This is what we haven't learned, Hebrews 13 and 4. We have not learned this, y'all. That's why the Bible said, you're gonna find the truth in God's law. It's the commandments of God. That's gonna release us, that's gonna make us free. So moving forward, you should be looking for a godly man that keep God's commandments. All right, sir? All right, yeah. Hebrews. The book of Hebrews. Yes, ma'am. 13, verse 4. Yeah. Marriage is honorable at all, as a bed under foul. So the Bible talk about marriage. A lot of our young men run away from marriage. The reason a lot of our young men run away from marriage, because we live in a society where at the click of a button, you can see a woman twerking. Right. Right. At the click of a button, you can watch pornography. Right. Yeah. At the click of a button, you can see what you want to see. Right. Anything you want to see. Look, he rolling his eyes. He can't believe I just said that. Well, it's okay. 
But the Bible says what it says. Right. That's all right. He don't want to fly. He want to continue to stay in the sin that he's in. Just like all these other brothers in society. Yeah, sure. They right. want to remain in sin. They love America. But when the nukes drop, when the bombs drop on America, yeah. they're going to be calling up. for God. Yeah. So yeah. just let me walk on past and not grab a flight. That's perfectly fine. Right. Right. Walk on into destruction. Right. Because it's coming. Right. Oh, it's coming. Right, right now, they're getting ready to gear up for war. You don't know what's going on in Congo. You don't know what's going on in Ukraine. You don't know what's going on all throughout the world in China, Japan. All these nations are gearing up for war. Right. You don't see NATO at odds. You don't see America boasting themselves against the European Union. What's going to happen from that? Right. The Bible says this place is going to get burned with nuclear fire. Right. So you don't have to get a flight. You can roll your eyes like a female, but that ain't going to stop God's word from being the truth. The Bible still is a true Book. That's right. right. Hebrews 13 and 4 again. Yeah. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bad and the foul. But a whoremonger. But a whoremonger, like the brother that just passed by, a whoremonger that hates when we teach the truth of God's right. word. Right. And I'm done to us. God will judge. He's going to get judged if he ain't already got it. That's right. right. He's going to be at the clinic, itching and scratching, right. talking about, man, I can't believe she burned me. Right. Man, right. I can't believe I got herpes. Right. Well, God told you what would happen if you didn't repent. Right. A lot of people, we live in a society today where about 70% of the people that we are around in our day-to-day -day lives have contracted an STD at one point in their life. Right. And then we say, well, why did this happen? It happens because of sexual immorality. That's right. Right. And America teaches you it's okay to be sexually immoral. That's right. And that's why we are living the way that we live in and disease is running rampant and sickness and pestilence like the Bible talks about. Right. We need y'all to subscribe to help us push. We got a lot of work to do in North Carolina. The Carolinas need this work. Right. You know what I'm saying? The Carolinas need this work. So we need y'all to go and subscribe right now. Grab your finger. This one right here in particular. Right. Swipe the YouTube that you're probably already watching. Click the YouTube app. Right. Go to IUIC Riley page. Right up under there, it says subscribe. Click that button one time. Click that check. Subscribe to IUIC Riley. Hello, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. And finally, my brother, be strong enough.